Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Maker MD channel. Quick video for you guys today. Have you got yourself an old Coleman stove or an old Coleman lantern and you can't seem to get pressure into that tank? It seems like as hard as you try, you just can't get past that check valve. Well, it's usually pretty simple to get the check valve clean, but the problem is getting it out. So stay tuned, I'm gonna show you guys the right way to get out a check valve and clean it. Thanks for watching. What you're going to want is one of these tools to extract this check valve. Here is the pump on my 500 series Coleman and you can see that it doesn't, doesn't push in good and then at times even when it does push in good sometimes it will clear a little bit and it will work a little bit better, but it's clearly stuck. And we need to get it out of there to try to get it uh, to get it working better. What you want to do is just get a screwdriver. You just, just want to get that off. And we're going to go ahead and pull this whole thing out. It's stuck there. There we go. You can see that the. The leather's fine. I've got the leather working fine. Screw this out. Now, inside, there's, it's very hard to see. I don't know if I will be able to show you guys. I think you can see it right there. You can see that there is, you can see that there is a slot for what looks like a flathead screwdriver, but it's actually very, very broad base and it's super easy to strip that out. So we've got this tool, which basically has this end, which I will tell you guys, I had to file down just a little bit to get it to fit just right. It really didn't want to fit super well. So I file down slowly on either end and it'll, it locks in very good. This is the tip that screws into the check valve and you just want to look, you've got two different sides here. Obviously we're going to be using this one right here. All you want to do is get this, screw it in to the check valve, okay? And then you want to get this and you want to make sure you can see it's moving and then boom, it locks into place. Get yourself this little screw. Get it finger tight. Got myself an adjustable wrench here. And now basically since that those teeth are locked into the check valve. You can safely oof, undo it just like that. And you'll see the check valve comes right off. And you can see how the teeth fit in there. Just like that. Just undo this, pop it out. And here is your check valve. Now it's moving. But it obviously wasn't working super well, not well enough for me at least. So we're going to soak this in some carb cleaner. There we go. You can see, and I'll just put it on the, on the angle here. And it's already got some junk in there. We're going to let it soak with carb cleaner and then I'll run carb cleaner through it. And that should clear it up. Sounds quite a bit better. So we're going to load this back into our tool. What I'll do is just screw this in, just like that. And then we'll pop that on. You can see it's right in those teeth. And then just simply put it in, turn this. It'll bottom out eventually, just like that. Just give it a little bit of a tighten. Just like that, don't have to go crazy. And this pops right out. Save all of our pieces here. Now let's get this back in. There we go, just gotta feel around a little bit. All right, let's get this back on. And 
There we go. You can see how well it works now. Before, it would not allow me to put air in. Tighten it up. And I'm gonna let the pressure out. Works perfectly. That's just how easy it is to get this out. Clean it up and get it working right. Now I know, I know there's plenty of you out there that wanna see this thing get going. I haven't done any work to it, really. It will light. I don't think it's quite working at full power, but I'll light it up for y'all since y'all stuck with this video. You can see over here, there seems to be liquid gas getting in over there. It's just not fully preheated. Turn it down a little bit. All right, let's let it preheat. So that's pretty good. If I turn it up more, I start to get a little more sputtering, but the longer it goes, the better it gets. Anyway, stay tuned. I will be doing a full review of the 500 and a full restoration of this bad boy, probably including paint and everything else, but that's the stove. So there you go. You definitely need, I would suggest, a specialty tool like this, especially if you're gonna be doing this quite a bit. You can grind down. I've seen people say you can get a, a big flathead screwdriver and grind the tip down till it's a lot thicker. I'm sure that would work just fine. I wanted to make sure that, you know, I, I would be able to take this out without, without difficulty. Um, it was a $30 tool, I think. And I plan on doing quite a bit of work with these different old Coleman stoves and even newer Coleman stoves. So I figured I'd go ahead and get one. But if you don't use a tool like this, be super careful. It's brass. You can easily strip that out. It's usually on there really, really tight. So be careful. Like I said, just a quick video. I, I am planning on doing more and more videos here on this channel. So make sure you subscribe if you're interested in any kind of making, whether it be 3D printing or restoring these old stoves. And I got other things in the works as well. I have a pretty cool uh, restoration video. It's not a full restoration on the Coleman 502. We probably will be doing a full restoration on that. I might even get a, a different 502, one that's really, really, um, really marred up and, and, and try to redo that one, uh, sandblast it, do everything and get it looking good again. If you found us because of the stoves, make sure you hit the like down and make sure you subscribe to the channel plan on doing a lot more stove related videos here. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. Stay tuned for more stove videos and all making videos here on the Paleo Maker MD channel. <laughs>